Bishop Henry R. Williams, co-pastor Gwendolyn Williams, in the Word of Oasis Church family. <laughs> we welcome you with love. trust and lean on you, O oh God. We thank you tonight as we come, O oh God, into this place, O oh God. That this morning we lift up our hands before you and give you all praises and all adoration, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you kept our families, O oh God. You kept our loved ones and our co-workers, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, how you continue to keep our community, O oh God. But God, we thank you as we come to lay our cares before you, God. We worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. We give you all adoration and all exhortation, oh God. And Father, as we come, oh God, we just declare, oh God, that we set the atmosphere, oh God, that will be conducive for praise, oh God. Will be conducive for worshiping you, oh God. Will be conducive, oh God, for your word and your will, oh God, to go forth, oh God. Because you said that your word would not go out void, but it would accomplish everything that was sent out to do, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, that you said you are prospered in the way in which we sent it, oh God. And we give you glory this morning, oh Father. We thank you, oh God, as we come before you, oh God. We lift up those in our communities, oh God, who are now, Father, may be sick in their bodies, oh God. For different type of disease, Father, every infirmity or pain, oh God. Father, I thank you. They may even be worrying about tomorrow, God. 
but we know you hold tomorrow and thus we know you hold us in your hand, oh God. We lift up some of those, oh God. Some families may be bereaving during this time, oh God. Father, we thank you for your bloodline hedges of protection that always cover and keep us, oh God. But even during this time, oh God, we thank you for your love that embraces us. That you have, Father, are the balm of Gilead, that, Father, you will soothe our hearts, oh God. We, Father, lift up everyone we forsake, oh God. And we declare, God, that by your strife that we are healed, oh God. In our bodies, in our minds, oh God, and in our emotions, oh God. So as we come before, we yield unto you, oh God, everything that would try to beset us, oh God. But God, we lift up hands to worship you, for you healed our sick, oh God. You delivered some, oh God, and we thank you this morning, oh God. But Father, we decree over our, not just our Valdosta and Lowndes County area, God, over our communities and our state, oh God, over our nation and internationally so, oh God, that the peace of God will guard our hearts and minds, your peace that surpasses all our understanding will guard our hearts and mind through you, Jesus Christ. And we thank you this morning, oh God. So, Father, we thank you that we will continue, God, choose to be transformed by the renewing our mind, oh God. Father, we thank you that this day, oh God, we continue to seek you first and your kingdom, oh God. And you said everything else, Father, will be added unto us, oh God. Father, we lift up those that may not know you, oh God. We thank you that this day, oh God, that your word will penetrate our hearts, oh God, and your wooing of your Holy Spirit, oh God, will cause an opportunity that when they hear the truth of the word of God, they'll say, what must we do to be saved, oh God? We thank you for your true sons and daughters, oh God, who may, in, who may be in that area, oh God, that they will speak a word in season to their hearts, oh God. We thank you today, oh God, that we lift up the family of woo before you, God, that you continue to cover and keep us, oh God. That, Father, we continue to look unto you and trust you with all our hearts, oh God. That we continue to walk in holy boldness, oh God. That we will continue, God, to trust you and therefore entrust in you, oh God. We will be disciplined, oh God, in every area of our lives, oh God. We choose to be consistent and persistent, oh God, being about your business, oh God. We thank you as you continue to reveal unto us our purpose for some, oh God. But we thank you we know our main purpose today, oh God, to love others, oh God. And we thank you, God. We thank you as this word come today, oh God, that it fall on good ground, oh God, that's ready to receive the truth of your word, oh God. And so we thank you, God. We thank you for our pastors, oh God. We thank you for Bishop as he gives the word today, oh God, that you continue to cover them, oh God, with your blood. Continue to let them walk in divine health and healing, oh God, and giving the true word of God to those who hear God, even those who are on the airways now, God. You know their needs, oh God. I thank you that you will supply it, oh God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and all the adoration, oh God. So, oh God, we worship you today, God. We move from prayer to praise and give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' matchless name, we say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Come on and worship the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, can you just raise a hallelujah? Come on, can you just raise a praise? Hallelujah. Come on, raise it in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, because he's been so good. Father, we raise a hallelujah to you. Hallelujah. Oh, because you love us, we raise a hallelujah. Come on, just raise it in the atmosphere. Oh, Father, we worship you, Jesus. Come on and worship the name of the Lord with us. Oh, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the
facing. Come on, raise a hallelujah. A hallelujah that's bigger than your circumstance. A hallelujah sing louder than your circumstance. A louder than what you're facing. Raise a hallelujah right where you are. Come on, just raise a praise. Hallelujah. Father, we raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you deserve it today. because you're good. I say we raise it today because you're good. Can I rephrase that? We raise it today because you're better than good. Come on, how many of you know that he's better than good? Come on, if he's been better than good to you, you ought to raise a praise. Come on, go on and raise a praise with the fruit of your lips. in the atmosphere. All we're saying is you've been so good to me. You've been so kind. Oh, you've been so good to me. You've been oh, so let the nation cry glory, hallelujah, you are worthy of it all, every voice will cry Jesus, you are holy, and we worthy we sing, yes, hey. Top of 
again. So kind. So kind. Let the earth cry. Glory. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy to be praised. It's worthy. 
stop being good. You've been good. You've been good for a long time. You've been good. You've been good for a long time. One last time. You've been good. You've been good for a long time. Come on, he's been good. So good to me, you've been, you've been so kind, say, so kind, you've been good, say, you've been so good, so good, come on, let's return to our time, Bishop, you've been, you've been so kind, so kind, you've been, say, you've been so good, so good. Yeah. Trying to let it go. You've been, you've been Come on, right where you are, just raise it. So good. As so we turn over to our bishop. You've been, you've been so one last time. So from the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. To the setting. To the setting of the sun. Your name. Your name is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. From the rising. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I am so excited to have you worship with us today at Word of Oasis. Welcome to our worship experience. Whatever platform you are viewing from, we welcome you today. I tell you, and I say it again, you can't go to heaven until you worship with us here at Word of Oasis. We thank the Lord for Minister Taylor leading us at the intercession. Thank you for the world's greatest praise team. We thank God for them. Thank God for our musicians and everyone that is behind the scene that is making this service possible today. Thank you so, so very much very very much amen 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 there is word from the lord amen there is word from the lord amen as i was preparing and uh making ready to come this evening i just thank god for this opportunity to come before god's people with a word from the lord amen and as i was preparing i was reminiscing of the goodness of God as the team just sang 
and uh, and an old hymn came back to mind. I was thinking about those Baptist preachers. You know, I was raised Pentecostal, but my father had quite a bit of invitations at the Baptist church. They loved this preaching, and uh, and I would go over, and uh, and many times the Baptist pastors, before they bring the word, they would they would have their their hymn that they were saying. And, uh, and I just want to just do a, a few uh, 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 bars of the chorus of this, of this old hymn before we go into the word of the Lord. Amen. Oh, to his hand, God's son changing hand, you just hold to his hand. That's it. God's unchanging hand. Opportunity to, to pastor a multi generational church. So, so we, we mix the new and the old, the old and the new. Amen. And there are times God even give us a new song and we worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things that are eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Thank you, Lord. Take your Bibles, if you will. Look in the book of Proverbs. We're going back to the book of wisdom. Proverbs. Go back to the book of wisdom. Proverbs 6. And we're going to also go over to Proverbs 30. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to open your holy writ. It is our prayer, Lord, this morning that you would speak a word in season to those that would have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord God, I thank you right now that you will make a mark in your people's lives that can never be erased. Thank you for the transforming, transposing word of God. I thank you right now for placing the anointing upon us. Lord, we make a demand on it. We ask that you would stir it in us. Lord, that we would reach the unreachable, touch those, Lord, that are crying out and need help. God, I thank you and I praise you now, Lord. Stir us, God. Stir us in our mind. Stir us in our spirit. Lord, I pray, God, that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Christ's name. Amen and amen. You know what we do every week? We state our faith confession before receiving the word. 
Come on, just follow along with us. This is God's inspired word. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I open my ears to hear God's word. I open my spirit to receive God's word. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I decree that my life is the better after having heard the word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Proverbs 6. Let's go to the 6th verse. And we'll read through the 11th verse. And then I would, that you would turn over to Proverbs 30 and 25. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And the word of the Lord reads, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Go over to Proverbs 30 and 25, and it says, The ants are a people not strong, Yet they prepare their meat in the summer. And I like to speak from this subject this morning. Lesson from an ant. Lessons from an ant. It is said that ants have been documented to be able to carry, listen, 10 to 15 times their own body weight. Did you hear me? 10 to 15 times their own body weight. An ant can do that. If a human could lift 20 times their body weight, that would be about 4,000 pounds. Ants do this, listen, without anyone watching over them, making them work. Ants do that. You've seen it. They, 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 they prepare for the winter in the summer. You see them uh, uh, marching in, in, in some time in, in a line, minding their own business, and, they're, and, they're, and they are storing food. You see little niblets in their, in their little teeth, their little, their little uh, prongs or the, that, that they are able to to grasp a hold of whatever they are carrying back to their, their, their habitation for the, for the winter as they are preparing. And, and the key word here is that they are preparing. They are preparing for a change of season. And they, beloved, the scripture says that they don't even have an overseer. They have no one to make them do it. They have this innate nature in them that lets them know it's time to start harvesting and preparing because a season change is coming. So here it is. It's important for us to learn lessons from an ant. I looked over in the message translation at verse uh, 10 and 11 of the Proverbs from the text. And I love how it reads because it says, a nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. You know, do you know what's, what comes next? He asks the question in verse 11. It tells us, it says just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life, poverty, your permanent house guests. Did you hear that? 
poverty will be your permanent house guest. Oh my God. That, that, that right there ought to awaken something in you. A lot of time, I, I, I don't think that a lot of Christians, I don't think they read the book of Proverbs as they should. They, they read other books. They want a deeper revelation. They want to get deep truths, as they like to say. But, uh, but, but how about digging in the book of wisdom and how to live our natural lives? I think we got the spiritual pretty much almost down pat. But we fall short many times on how to live our natural lives. Because yet we are in this world, but not of it. All right? Yes, we are looking forward to going to heaven. Okay? We're looking forward to that. We're, we're looking forward to spending eternity with the Lord. But until then, let us also pay attention because we are also living in this system. Okay, even though we are in the kingdom of God, there's also the world has a kingdom, and we have a in the world has a system. Got it? It's important that we understand that. Uh, 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 I recently saw a post that said this new generation uh, does not lack work. You can give these, and they use the expletive, I won't say what they said, but you, you can give these blankety blanks a, a, a job sleeping and they'll wake up and quit. <laughs> this generation, they don't land the word. But the scripture is, is clear in telling us that, that, that it, 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 you can look forward to, to, to this if, if, if you're taking a little nap there, a little nap here, you're taking days off that you ought to be working. He said that you're going to be dirt poor. You're going to have a dirt poor life. And poverty is going to be your permanent house guest. That's what it says in the scripture. It's going to be your, your permanent house guest. Poverty is. Those, those scholars uh, that in, 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 in seminary, there's a course that you could teach, uh, uh, a study rather, that... Uh, it's, it's, in, it's, it's called demonology. Now, I didn't take that because I saw enough demons growing up in the church and uh, staying up half the night. My daddy, them trying to cast the devil out of folks. And, and, uh, and then we got to get up and go to school the next day. And we only got a couple hours of sleep. And they're wrestling with the devil. So I, I got a PhD in demonology growing up. So I didn't take that course. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 but scholars of, of demonology say, listen, that that poverty has the demonic name nibbles. Did you know that? It's a, it's a, it, it, it is a demonic spirit named nibbles. Nibbles. It takes on, listen to this now, don't miss this. It takes on the image of a rat and leaves its droppings around your dwelling place. It, it, this, this spirit of poverty, this, this, this demonic spirit by the name of Nibbles, listen to this, it carries an odor. Did you know poverty smells? Poverty has an odor. Poverty smells. Uh, uh, I don't mean to be ugly when I say this, but, but if, you, if you go into the inner city particularly, uh, especially those that are held captive in, in the housing projects are the ghetto. They, they live in, in, in this uh, vicarious cycle of poverty from generation to generation. When, 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 you, when you go into these areas, I don't care whether you, whether you visit uh, the, the, the housing ghettos in the south or in the north, they always have a familiar smell. All right. Now, you have to be sensitive to the spirit to understand that. Now, again, I'm not trying to, to, to castigate anyone or, or, or put anyone down. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that. But, but I want you to understand it's a spirit. And you find generations that, that, is, that is held in its clutches. You, you can reach back and you can see great grandmama and, grand, and great grandmama there. All of them raise generations in poverty. 
Are you hearing me? And, and it seems as though uh, there's no way out. It seems as though this is just the way life is going to be. But it doesn't have to be that way. It does not. Some, yes, have the testimony uh, that, that, that uh, they were fortunate enough to, to be able to leave the ghetto, to be able to, to make a life outside of the projects, and thank God for that. Thank God for their testimony. Thank God for them overcoming. And I pray many of them that do go back and give back and help someone else uh, 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 pull up uh, uh, on their own bootstraps and be able to, to, to escape this vicarious cycle called poverty. Uh, when, I want to just give you something for food for thought, if you will. It, it, uh, food for thought, please hear me clear, clearly when I tell you. If you can run a gang, you can run a company. If you can write a rap, you can write a book. If you can film a street fight, you can shoot a movie. Don't just take the block, but take your place in the world. Stop selling yourself short. Did you hear what I just said? Stop selling yourself short. Because if you can do the above that I just mentioned, it's so much more. Are you hearing me? It, I, I, I didn't even mention that, that if, if, you, if you know how to, how to cut drugs, uh, you 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 be a pharmacist, and I mean the, the drug deal ain't nothing but a street pharmacist. That that's all that is. I mean to keep it real, you know. You 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 know you know how to cut it. You know you know you know you, some sometimes they they they, they 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 you know it's so potent. You know they they have to they have to they have to you know tone it down. You know uh, because you couldn't handle it. You know if if you know if you know how to do that why didn't you go to why didn't you go to school to be a pharmacist you 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 a street doctor <laughs> come on here stop selling yourself short you there's so much more in you and and and, and uh, I, 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 I heard and I, I I wanted to take it but I it wouldn't be fair because I don't want to be guilty of plagiarism, but but uh, but I heard I heard uh, uh, Pastor Dr. R. A. Vernon say something the other day. I got to give it to my man. Uh, but but he said this. He said this. He said in 2022. He said he said this. Now I, I didn't say, it, but I caught what he was saying. He said I don't want a miracle. He said a miracle. I love this definition. He said a miracle is supernatural assistance based on my inability or unwillingness to accomplish it through biblical instructions. <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? Oh, I said it too fast. He said a miracle is supernatural assistance based on my inability or unwillingness to accomplish it through biblical instructions instructions. He went on to say, he said, be careful when you always need a miracle. He said, okay, he said, you, 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 you don't, you don't, do, the, you don't do, do right by your money, so you need a financial miracle. He said, if you're eating chicken and pork chop sandwiches and sausage sandwiches, now you have high blood and low blood and almost no blood, now you need a physical miracle. He said, you, you, don't, you don't know how to treat people, so your wife is getting ready to leave you. So now you need a relational miracle. You got, you, 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 you got, you got deep emotional hurt, so now everyone is walking away from you. You're always in pain, he said. Now you need an emotional miracle. Mm. But God says you don't need a miracle. He said you just need instruction. And if you follow instructions, you won't need so many miracles. Ooh, I know I got some folks upset with him now. I'm glad he, he said it. I said, Pastor Dr. R.A. Uh, Vernon said it. Now, Bishop Henry, I'm just repeating what he said. I just like what he said because I got, got, got the point. He said, he said, 
I keep hearing you say in 2022, you want a financial miracle. He said, I don't. He said, I want supernatural increase because that means I gave my own tithes, I worked my own job, I decided to bless somebody, and because I did that, God opened up the windows of heaven, I gave my first fruit, so I don't need a miracle, I just need God's supernatural. I just need God's supernatural. Supernatural is, is just putting super on top of natural. <laughs> that's, a, that's what supernatural means. So, so did y'all get, get his point? Many times folk, folks in the church are always hollering, talking about, I want a miracle. I want a miracle. I want a miracle. But you don't want to follow instructions. See, the Proverbs, what I'm teaching today, what I'm, what I'm teaching today is, 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 is about you participating, all right, and digging yourself out of the hole, all right, that you dug yourself into. And the scriptures gives us instructions on how to avert it, number one. But if you find yourself in that because you fail to follow instructions, he's also showing you a way out. You just got to learn how to follow instructions. Are you hearing me? I heard Bishop T.D. Jake said this. He said, until you fix your habits, God will not pour resources into a dysfunctional system. Did you hear what he said? Until you fix your habits, God will not pour resources into a dysfunctional system. It's dysfunctional. You got poor habits. You keep doing the same thing year after year and expecting different results. Here we are almost at the end of January and you skipped into 2022 on watch night service or even a New Year's Eve, whatever you want to call it, service. And you talking about this my year and here it is, we're not even, all, we're not even completed the first month and you still right back into your old ways. You, you back into your old habits. Come on, see? See, and be, but you expecting different results. It does not work like that, y'all. Are you hearing me? See, the gap between the life you're living and the life you want is called choices. Hmm. Did you hear me? The gap between the life you're living and the life you want is called choices. It's the choices that you're making. You keep making bad choices. You the one messing up your money. Ain't nobody else doing it. You doing that. You are the one that's living beyond your means. You're the one doing that. You're the one that's spending everything that you get your hands on. My mother used to tell me when I was a little boy, she said, she when I was a little boy, my mother used to say, boy, that money burning your hands. You can burn a hole in your hands. Anybody had a mother like me? She said, that money gonna burn a hole in your hands. And what she was trying to teach me is that, son, you can't spend everything you get your hands on. If you think back right now, that, that, that wisdom, which they should have made me do it, but, 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 but think about all the money that has gone through your hands over your lifetime. What if you would have started at that young age? What if your parents would have taken your little hands and they would have made you save a little of everything that you got from a young child up to where you are now. And you developed a habit of saving and investing. How much would you be worth now? Come on, y'all got quiet on me now. See, see you, you're thinking about, don't cry, because I know you're thinking about all the money you wasted. Come on, see? But it's important that we, we, we make the right choices. See, it's the thing. See, the gap between the life you are living and the life you want is called choices. See, we want a better life, but we don't want to do what it takes to get that life. We want God to just, you know, we want it. We call it in the church world, but we want God to do a quick work. Good thing. God going to do a quick work. You ever heard some folks, some folks in church prophesying like that? God going to do a quick work on you. He ain't going to do nothing quick. He ain't doing no quick work. He ain't doing nothing. So sit down and shut your mouth. See? Because you got yourself in the predicament that you're in. And many times, you're going to repeat that lesson because you didn't pass the test. 
See, he can't trust you. See, come on, are you hearing me? See, until, like I'm going back to what Bishop said, he said, until you fix your habits, God would not pour resources into a dysfunctional system. It's true. We are asking God for, for multi-millions and billions. We got these t-shirts now, you know, from billions to trillions and all this right here, and you don't even know how to handle the hundred. Come on, you, you can't even master that yet. God is not going to trust you with more if you can't handle what you, he's already placed in your, in your hands. Are you hearing me? See, let me move on. I'm going to give a whole lot of statistics because I don't, I don't, I, I study statistics and, and they have their purpose, but I don't want to, to make you inferior in any way. But, but I must share some things with you uh, 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 this morning that's important that you get. If, if black people are going to close America's racial wealth gap, you will have to become disciplined, listen, with saving and investment strategies. You're going to have to become disciplined in saving and investment strategies. The latest statistic as of March 2021, America's racial wealth gap between the, uh, between the net worth of black families compared to white families was $17,150 versus $171,000. Did you hear that? That's just a statistic. Black families, well, when we talk about net worth, we're talking about, we're talking about equity in your home and, and also savings. This is what this is talking about. With, 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 with how much uh, cash on hand and equity in your home or whatever other uh, 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 savings or investment you have. The, did, did you see the disparity? Do you see the inequity there? $17,150 versus $171,000. That's a big, big gap. Build, let me encourage you, because the, the, the teaching today is to encourage you. Build multiple income streams. Build multiple income streams. Listen very carefully. Your job controls your salary, not your income. Y'all missed it. Come on, did you hear what I just said? Your job controls your salary, not your income. Give yourself a raise by using your nine to five income to buy more income sources. Did you hear that? Come on. To buy more income sources. You should be investing that money. You should be, you should be saving, investing. All right? You may be leery of the stock market. Don't be afraid of it. All right? You should have been in a long time ago. All right? Got it? I started investing in the, in the stock market uh, in the late 80s, around 88, 89. I've been in the market for a minute. Oh. Uh, so, so I started investing. I'm also in, in, the, in the real estate. You, you should get real estate uh, uh, rental properties. It's important. Real estate is just what it means, real estate. All right? Consider that. I'm not saying you have to. All right? Uh, some people call side hustles. You know what you're doing out there. You know, as long as it's not illegal. You know? <laughs> you know, making more money outside of your, your nine to five. All right, online businesses. Uh, now it's a big thing called uh, what, NFTs, all right? Some folks are a little leery there, all right? Understand it, you know, know how to manipulate it and work it, all right? There's money being made there, got it? So, so don't be afraid of the unknown. Study it. Ask questions. Get involved. I'll get into that in just a moment. But I want to make sure you understand that, that your job controls your salary, not your income. Got it? I, lo I, look at, I look at athletes, professional athletes, basketball, football players. I look at a lot of these guys. They make more uh, in, 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 uh, in, in how they uh, advertisements and uh, endorsements and and all that. they make more in endorsements 
than they do from their, 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 their uh, professional uh, basketball or football uh, salary. Got it? Because they know the value of their name. Okay? So they get involved in other business ventures. So it's important that we change our mindset. Got it? Warren Buffett said this. He said, if you don't find a new way to make money, he said, if you don't find a way to, to, to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Let me say it again. He said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. That's a powerful statement. That's a very powerful thing. In other words, you, you ought to make, you ought to have investments, you ought to have investment about when you sleeping, it's making you money. When you're on vacation, it's making you money. Why you working a nine to five? Don't quit that yet, all right? Because you ain't got to that point yet. Until you get to that point, work the nine to five. But you ought, your money ought to be working for you. I've often told you this, and I'll say it again. Money makes a good servant, servant, but a lousy master. Money makes a good servant, but a lousy master. Are you hearing me today? It's important that you really get this lesson. Now, I know some folks that had already probably already tuned me off because you don't want to hear nothing about, hey, go again, talking about money. Well, you know what? It's not for you, okay? And I'm not offended by that. Okay, I'm not offended by that at all because some people want it, some people don't because they don't know the purpose of it, okay? Because next week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude and because I got some other things I need to move on to in the new year, but, but I'm going to conclude with, with teaching you that money has a mission. It has a mission. So we're going to talk about the mission of money on next week because it has a purpose. It serves a purpose. It's a servant, okay? So we need to understand that. For too long, you know, we, we, we've escaped this subject in the church, but yet at the same time, it's the very thing that has divided your home. It has caused arguments. It has caused stress. It has caused unrest. The very thing that you want to escape. We have to talk about it, all right? And I'm taking time to do this this month because if I was to invite you back for a Saturday seminar, most people won't even show up. They don't come. Okay, so I catch you on Sunday, all right? <laughs> so I got you while I got you. So you got to sit there and listen to me. Don't you turn me off, all right? So I'm not, gonna, I'm not here as an investment uh, advisor. I'm not here to tell you what to invest in, how to save, or whatever. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that because that's not my purpose, nor will I be liable for giving you information or advising you in such a way, okay? Because I'm not a financial advisor, okay? I, I handle my own business, but I'm not here to try to tell you what to do with yours. Because there's, so, there's, not, there's no one way to invest. There are so many areas to invest in, all right? Some people are big now on, on art. They invest in art. Uh, they, they, I understand that there are NFTs that you can invest in art. I don't know much about that, but now you can have digital art. Uh, that's blowing my mind just thinking about that uh, and, and how you're able to invest. But it's, it's, it's so many ways out there. There's not one way to make your money work for you, okay? But you, you, you have to lead, let your passion lead you, okay? Got it? Now, Jesus talks about making usury of your money in the parable in Matthew 25 through 14 through 30. He gave each of them in the parable talents based, listen to this, based upon their ability. To the one he gave five, to the, to the other, he gave two, and the last guy, he gave him one. Listen, this, the parable tells us that he returned and required them to give an account of how they used, listen, his money. The one with five traded, the scripture says, okay, and made five more talents. 
Likewise, the one with two talents gained two more, the scripture says. However, the one with the one talent went, the scripture says, and dug a hole and put his master's money in the ground. Did you hear that? But let's, let's continue the, the, the story. I, I wouldn't do it justice. I want to just read it to you because the account is so, so amazing to me. If you jump down into the 19th verse of Matthew 25, Jesus continues to share the parable. He said, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them uh, five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you rulers over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. All right? Then he goes on to say, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I've gained two more other talents besides them. His Lord said unto them, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you rulers over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had re uh, received the one talent came and said, Lord, <laughs> I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, Gather where thou hast not straw. You hear? I mean, talking to his master now. It sounds like he rebuking him. Seems like he got an attitude problem. Come on. Look at like he, he done got swole up. And then he, then, he, then he said, he said, and I was afraid. And when he hid thy talent in the earth, lo there, and thou, uh, thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and then at my coming I should have received my own listen with usury. In other words, with some interest at least. If you didn't want to go out and invest it and work the money, at least put it in the bank and let it draw some interest. He said, take therefore the talent from him, take it from him, all right? Take, get it, take it, snatch it from him, give it to him which have 10 talents, because I told you, he gave it to them based upon their ability. You see, some people, they, they, they don't have the ability, see, to increase or to make more, got it? So therefore, God, then why is God going to entrust you with more and you don't know how to handle it? For he said, for unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And he cash, and, and cash ye the unprofitable, <laughs> do you see that? Servant into out of darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know how in the church when we was growing up as a child, I don't know how they got from this scripture, this parable, talking about the talents, talking about playing instruments and singing, bro, dude. I just don't understand that. That had nothing to do with your, your, your musical ability. Jesus wasn't talking about the talent. God, daughter, God will take your talent. He'll give it to me. I wish I, y'all know y'all heard it growing up. You got, God, 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 I wish I could say, God, give me your talent. The talents was money. It had nothing to do with musical abilities, other abilities. He's talking about money. He said, you should have taken my money. When you go back to the beginning of the parable, notice it in the kingdom of, of, of heaven is lacking unto. And then he goes on and shares the parable. The kingdom of God is lacking unto this. The kingdom of God, God wants you to have more if you want it. Now, he's not going to make you. All is able to have more, but again, some folks don't want it. He's not going to force it on you, all right? I don't know whether you're the slothful and, and lazy and wicked servant. I hope you're not. But some people don't want the responsibility of more. 
All they're going to do is you got more problems. People be talking about making more money. They won't do nothing but bring more problems. No, it won't bring problems if you know how to manage it. And you don't, and you don't have a dark heart if you're not wicked. See? You, 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 that's the key to all of this. See? You, you, you know, don't be afraid of, of, of resources because that's what it is. You have to look at it for what it is. It's a resource. Got it? You have to start, you have to start somewhere. All right? Start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can. Start where you are. All right? You, maybe you don't want to, you don't want millions or billions. That's fine. You don't, I mean, hey, to each his own. You know? But even the level that you're on, you still need more than two nickels. You come on. Your goal should be to save and invest no less than 10% of your income. I mean, that, we've been singing that song for I don't know how long. I mean, but folks still won't do it. You know? We call it the 80-20 the, 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 uh, rule. All right? Or the 20-80. The 20-80. 10% to God, 10% to yourself. All right? And then you live on the rest. You live on the 80. But some folks, I mean, God bless them. We have some of the old saying, good tithers, they get they're the Lord's money. But they never paid themselves. You, know, you have a problem taking care of you. You need to take care of you. Give the Lord what's his. Because then when you, when you take the, the, the accursed thing and God sanctifies the other 90% because you gave what belongs to him, then now you take another 10 and you put that aside in the bank and save it and begin to build it and begin to invest, all right? And then you live on the 80%. But you have to start somewhere. Number one, let me quickly give you a few things. Number one, you need to build an emergency savings. You need to have at least three to six months of income, all right? Save. Whatever your monthly uh, salary is, you should have that three to six months saved up. If an emergency arises, withdraw the funds, take care of the need, but then listen, replace it as soon as possible. It's important that you do that. Because many times, because you don't have a savings habit. Remember I was talking about when you were a little child and money is burning a hole in your hand? Many it's, people continue to live that way. They bring that same habit over into their adulthood and they save nothing. You spend every dime that you make. You have no savings. And that's why when an emergency happens, you're up the creek without a paddle. Come on, you between a rock and a hard place. Now you got to go out and start borrowing money, all right? And you go to these little loan companies and, you, and you, they charge you all this interest because I talked about credit last week, you got bad credit. So then you, you get these little loans and they charge you this high interest, all right? Just highway robbery because you in a fix, all right? Because you're not disciplined. Come on, yeah, I said it. You're not disciplined. You got to stop. It's not going to fix itself. You are going to have to, beloved, do it. I don't care if you don't start, but with $5 a pay period, $10, do something, save something, stop spending everything. Come on, y'all. You got to begin to build, all right? So many folk, they want, they want to get rich overnight. They, they, want, they, they, want, they want some... Uh, get rich quick scheme because you want to make up for all the years of stupidity of how you wasted that money and now you 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 want to get rich quick all right don't you you just overlooking the emergency savings trying to uh, establish a foundation i mean you can have a blueprint for a house it looks wonderful the finished product on that on the on the rendering of the drawing but listen that starts with the foundation it's every, every building starts with the foundation. I don't care how luxurious it is, what, it starts with the foundation. And these are foundational principles that I'm giving you that you need to begin with. You need to make sure you're contributing to your retirement account, 
all right? Because you need to make sure you got enough money. How long will your money last when you can't work anymore, all right? Or are you looking to your kids to be your retirement plan? <laughs> Come on, some folks doing that. I heard them, yeah, I done took care of you, now you got to take care of me, all right? That doesn't make sense, all right? Come on, not even scriptural. Come on, are you hearing me? But I mean, God bless you, you know, many times, you know, we, we take care of our parents, we do for them, and I'm not saying because I did it myself, all right? But, but, but my point is that when you learn better, you do better. Come on, I'm not putting that burden on my kids. They already know you ain't got to take care of daddy and mama. We good. I ain't giving it all to y'all. That's why I'm good. Okay? Got it? Amen. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna drain me dry. And then when I'm riding it with my dentist and I can't, you ain't taking all of mine. Because I need something to live on. I mean, so make sure you contribute until your retirement. Make sure that you have enough to, to live. People are living longer. You know, we're living longer lives. I want to live all my 120 years. That's what God promised me. So I want to make sure I have enough calculated in my retirement account to last me that long. Got it? You need to make sure you save with a goal in mind because I think that's why saving is so hard and tedious for some people because you don't set goals for your life. You need to set goals. Once you establish that uh, uh, emergency fund, you get that established and you got that set, don't touch it, leave it there because believe me, it's going to rain, all right? They call it the rainy day fund. Sometimes it rains, all right? Leave it there. Don't bother it. Don't go dipping in it, talking about y'all want some pork chops tonight. <laughs> Going to the grocery store, buying pork chops and, and, and frying chicken wings and all kinds. And, and you, you dipping in the money. Come on, I heard of folks doing that kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, and before you know it, you done dipped until you, you done dipped it all out. Come on, <laughs> you done dipped it all out. Don't do that. Leave the emergency funds alone, got it? But then when you establish that, then make sure, make sure your retirement's in place and many of your, your employers, you have a retirement plan there, use that. Maximize it. But then save with a goal in mind. I think that that makes it more fun. It makes it more challenging. It makes it exciting. If you don't own your own home, make sure you, you start saving for your home. You need to own your own home. Begin to save for the down payment if you need that. Got it? I don't know what it is, but you know, if you know what you need, make sure you start saving toward that. Have a goal that makes, that gives purpose to it. Need a new car? Save for the down payment or save enough to purchase it and pay cash for it. I don't know what place you're in. You know, uh, your kids' education to help them, uh, if, if, uh, you know, beyond student uh, loans and all of those things like that. Oh, you, you know, we want to try to make sure they don't have all of that burden on them. But, uh, but, but, uh, but many times you need, you need to have a goal in mind. Got it? It's important. All right? But I want to say this before I, before I move any further and I'll close and I'm about to close. If you have a heavy debt load, please hear this. If you have a heavy debt load, work on reducing your debts. All right? especially with high interest rates before you start trying to invest, all right? Because that makes no sense. It's like half a dozen in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Got it? So you, you don't want to even think about, you know, well, I don't know about getting in that, in that stock market. I want to start putting some money over in the market. No, you ain't ready. Because it, if you got heavy debt, all right, it will be, it will be more uh, 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 advisable for you to make sure you get out of that debt with the high interest, all right, before you start looking at investing and, 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 and making a um, user of your money in these other areas as I talked about earlier, all right? So you make sure that you have these things in place. Got it? Come on, y'all. All right, now if you have something to write with, this is important. I'm closing. This is important. I want you to write this down. I want you to write the word keep, K, E E P, write it, and then read up under it. I want you to write the word educating. E D U 
C-A-T-I-N-G. And then up under it, I want you to write yourself. Y-O-U-R-S-E-L-F. Got it? Now, I want you to, I want you to circle the first letters in each word vertically. What do you get? Key. You get key. There you go. You get key. If you want the key to success, you're going to have to commit to being a lifelong learner. Keep educating yourself. That's the key. Keep educating yourself. You don't have to get an MBA from Harvard to do the things that I'm talking about real. Self-educate. Pick a book up. My mother used to always tell me, boy, get a book in your hands. She always stay on me. I, when I was a little rascal, all I want to do is play. I ain't want to do all that. I ain't, mm, I ain't even want to go to school. I want to stay at the house. I want to play, come back in, and get some lunch. When she takes me some lunch, I don't go back out and play. I ain't want a book in my hand. But that, that just resonates in my head now. And what do I do now? I got a book in my hand. You can find me anywhere. You will never see me idle because I take a book. If I know I'm going to be in a place for a, time, a period of time, you're going to find me reading. Got it? I'm going to read. I'm going to educate myself. Okay? I'm going to constantly, if I don't know something, I find the book and I study it. And I educate myself on the subject, whatever that is. Got it? It's simple. Got it? It's important. Let me tell you a story and as I close. A woman came out of her house and saw three old men. A woman came out of her house and saw three old men with a, with a long white beard sitting in her front yard. She said, I don't think I know you, but you must be hungry. Please come in and have something to eat. Is your husband home, they asked. No, he's out, she said. Then three men said, then we cannot come in, they replied. When her husband came home in the evening, she told him what had happened. Then he said, go tell them I'm home and invite them in. The woman went out and invited them in. We do not go into a house together, they replied. Why is that, she asked. One of the old men explained, well, his name is Wealth. He said, pointing to one of his his friends, and said, pointing to the other, he is success, and I am love. Then he added, now go in and discuss with your husband which one of us you want in your home. The woman went in and told her husband what, he, what was said. Her husband overjoyed. How nice, he said. Then let us invite wealth. Let him come in and fill our home with wealth. His wife disagreed. My dear, why don't we invite success? Their daughter-in-law joined in there their, with, with her own suggestion. Wouldn't it not be better, she said, to invite love? Our home would then be filled with love. Her in-laws agreed. The woman went out and asked the three old men, which of you is love? Please come in and be our guest. Love got up and started walking towards the house. The other two also got up and followed him. Surprised, the, the lady asked wealth and success, I only invited love. Why are you coming in? The old men replied together, if you had invited wealth and our success, the other two of us would have stayed out here. But since you invited love, wherever he goes, we go with him. Wherever there is love, there is also success and wealth. 
the scripture is clear in saying faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. And then it says this, faith worketh by love. Got it? Faith, faith works by love. Love is quintessential to, wealth, to the wealth building process. You got to, you, you've got to have love. See, this goes back to money with a mission. Where's your heart? See, I, I got, I deal with that next week. See, a lot of folk, the reason they don't, they can't palate a teaching like this is because your heart is dark. See, you don't even trust yourself. But people that's hard is right toward God. They understand exactly what I'm saying. This teaching this month, I mean, I, I took a risk because I knew the challenge that was before me because we usually don't want to hear this kind of teaching, okay? But it's important. It's important that you get your life in order in this area, okay? Because I want us to get to the point whereby this area is so in order, we don't even have to talk about it. That's the way we ought to be at, at, at this point in the church, it's been 2,022 years since Jesus Christ died on the cross. And here we still talking about this. We shouldn't even have to have this conversation. If we haven't learned by now, when are we going to get it? Come on. We shouldn't even have to talk about it. Because I want you to understand, this is my last point I'm going to make. I'm not after money. I'm after the freedom that comes from having money. <laughs> Come on. Two very different goals. Did you hear what I just said? I'm not after money. I'm after the freedom that comes from having money. See? It's two different goals. You, you got to make sure you have the right heart. When you, my mentor says this, he repeats it all the time. When my heart is right toward God, he's obligated to call me into the company of the people I need to know. The knowledge of the things that I need to know that are critical for my success and my destiny. Whew, my God. Did you hear me? Where my heart. See, he started off with my heart's right toward God. See, your heart got to be right when your heart's right toward God. See, God knows your heart. And that's the reason why some people can be trusted and some aren't. See, he knows your heart. He knows that if some people get it, they ain't coming back to church. <laughs> you, can, you can kiss them goodbye. And God said, I know your heart. You ain't ready for it. Got it? See, and many times, Wealth will elude you because you're unwise in, in how you handle it. God, it will flee from you. You want to make sure that you respect her. When you respect money, money will respect you. Simple. All right? When you learn the mastery of it, you know the purpose of it. Because I want you to know something. Money is a tool. That's all it is. It's a tool. It's how you use it. Use it for good. Use it, use it to, to, to help others. Got it? Don't just waste it all on yourself. I'll talk again more about that on next week. See? But it's a tool. And God wants to know, can I trust you? Can I trust you to be a conduit in the earth that I could channel it through you to accomplish what I need to do in the earth? Because God is able to do anything, but he sets boundaries for himself. He won't overstep those boundaries. There are, there are laws that are in place, laws of nature, spiritual law, natural law. Yes, God can come down. He can, he can 
He can change all of this overnight, but he won't do it because that will violate the laws that's in place. Got it? But he used us. He said, I could come down in physical form, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a divine manner, but then I will violate the boundaries that I set. But you are here. My spirit is in you. Can I trust you to be my conduit in the earth that I can trust you to funnel it through you? See, that's what God wants to do. Question is, is can God trust you and can he use you? Can he use you? Can he trust you? Can he use you? Will you allow God to use you to do what he needs to do in the earth? This is why he said, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He do what he wants to do and what he wants done in the earth through his people. That's how God operates. And I want to be used to God. Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this teaching. I pray that we've said something to enlighten the hearts of your people. We are here to, to stir them, Lord, and to ignite a fire in them. Not to agitate, not to make anyone feel inferior, not to, 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 to cause anyone to be upset or to become dismayed because they are in a predicament and their situation is not where they want to be. God, I pray, God, that you would help them hear the deeper message. And Lord, that they will be willing to change and, 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 and learn how to obey your word because you've given us instructions. All we have to do is just obey you and you will take the struggle out of our life. I thank you for it. Now, take the struggle out. I hear that in my spirit right now. Lord, take the struggle out of their life. Lord, help them. Increase their faith. Teach them how to use their faith, Lord. Work through them, God. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord. For he that has begun this good work in you, I hear him saying he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it in you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, keep you is our prayer. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it's the greatest decision that you could ever make. I came across a scripture today in the message translation in the book of Acts 10 and 35, and it encouraged me. I just love it. I put it right here in my binder so I can see it all the time. It said, it makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, I love this. He said the door is open. Isn't that beautiful? Acts 10 and 35 of the message translation. He said the door is open. Just come if you're ready to do as he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. That's what he said. All you have to do is just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Save me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole through your precious blood. Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. You're in the family of God. It's all you have to do. Just confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. He said, Thou shalt be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go to our website. There's an area there. If you've already downloaded our app, go there. Send me an email. Let me know the decision that you made for Jesus Christ. I'm after souls. I want to see people's lives changed. I want to see lives transformed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I always have a few things I want to remind you of. Our daily prayer call, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday. Go to our website. It's right there uh, on the Facebook. On our, and you follow us on the social media. The information of how you can connect is, uh, is of no charge to you. Just dial that number and listen in five or ten minutes every morning, Monday to Friday, for prayer. Then Wednesday night, Bible study on Zoom. 
that is there on our, our social sites as well. Seven o'clock, they're having a tremendous study. You want to make sure that you're a part of our Zoom Bible study. We invite you. You don't have to be a partner. This is open for the public. You can come in be a part of it. Uh, just, just take that login information. Come join us. I want you to mark this Word of Oasis Partners. I want you to mark the date, February the 3rd. February the 3rd. I'll, I'll announce it close to the date as well. At 7 o'clock, by the way of Zoom, I want to encourage you to join Coach Kayla Robinson as she invites our youth, our young adults to check in, to help you navigate and, and to hear from you, your concerns amidst this COVID-19. We've not taken time to do that. She has such a passion. She reached out to me the other day and asked, could she do this? And I gave her my, my approval to do so. So she wants to be a part of this and want to reach out as an as a arm from us to you. So I want you to make sure there's going to be information up in our partner on our partner page only in our Facebook. We have a partner a, a group on Facebook for Word of Oasis Partners. Go there. That's going to be up in the coming days of the login information. I'm encouraging all of our parents, make sure that your children are logged in on that evening, February the 3rd at 7 o'clock with Coach Kayla Robinson. All right? I encourage you. Get your kids connected so that we can make sure she's going to help walk them through some things there to just listen and to help them navigate uh, through this very uh, tumultuous time that we are finding ourselves in. We appreciate her passion and her love that she has. Thank God for her leadership. All right, I want you to remember to do three things for me. Like, comment, and share. Pastor Gwen and I love you immensely, and we are continuously keeping you in our prayers, and we ask that you would do the same thing for us. Let's pronounce the blessing upon you before we dismiss from today's uh, service. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the church says amen and amen. Until next week, same place, same time. Join us for another phenomenal worship experience like no other here at Word of Oasis. Have a phenomenal, fantastic, prosperous week. Bishop Henry R. Williams, co-pastor Gwendolyn Williams, in the Word of Oasis Church family. <laughs> we welcome you with love. We welcome you here. We welcome you with love. We welcome you here.
Church family, we thank 